Good evening. Members of Perth's Noongar community have established a UN-approved refugee camp on Harrison Island. Dozens of police descended in a bid to break up the tent embassy. Protesters were caught up in violent clashes with riot squad officers, leading to at least three arrests. Dozens of officers on horseback, in cars and on foot took down tents and removed camping gear after the group repeatedly refused to leave. It's no news that Harrison camps are constantly being raided and dismantled. You're going to court for the right to Harrison Island on Tuesday. Can you tell us a little bit about that? One of our elders, Elder uh, Bella Brofo, she's the elder of our family, is going to court to go for a hearing to plead a, to introduce a case and or plead a case in a way to try fight for an injunction to stop the raids from the city of Perth and from the West Australian police that keeps raiding us on the island every time we set camp up for protesting on the island there and also to make a stand for the for the homeless people and for forced closure of the communities. What is so special about Harrison Island to your community? Harrison Island is the western what named for it but Madagarp is a woman's bathroom ground where 40,000 years women has been having children on that island so it's, it's a very sacred site to us to our cultural people in the, to us first nation people in the southwest government is using bylaws to raid the island but this is illegal because native title hasn't been agreed on yet at the moment native title still exists and it's been knocked back to august and we had the right to camp on the island and the island is protected by the aboriginal heritage act and also by the native title because it still exists but at the moment, uh, the city of Perth is saying that we need to use uh, camping permits to camp on the island, where we have rights to camp on the island because we're going by federal law and they're losing local laws. The city of Perth has broken a lot of laws and they know that. In the local laws, uh, the city of Perth has to give property back to us in seven days. It took us t 10 months to get our property back and when we went to go check our property most of the stuff had mole on it, it was disgusting. We were uh, applying f for confiscation so some of us is going to court now, I'm going to court as well because I'm claiming for confiscation for property that's been stolen off me. They know they are breaking federal laws but they just run on the muck at the moment and just getting away with it, with, it, with everything but they don't know sooner or later if you break the law justice will be served. These raids are displacing a lot of people. What what has happened to these people? Where are they living at the moment? Now most of these people has, are now living around in these cities. Uh, we got women and children, and we had women and children on the island. We had uh, old people slept camping on the island with us. Ever since the raids has happened, it's uh, moved them around. The Barnett government announced last year that it was cutting funding to remote communities. Um, they've just changed their decision. Why is that? The state elections coming up in six months. <laughs> The government wants to cover up its tracks and try to make themselves look good where in a way they get elected again. I'm hoping that if Labor gets in they can refund communities, if Liberals get in they're going to close these communities down. But they only want to fund these communities again, it's because it's got to do with the election because it's to make the government look good, the Liberals look good and trying to make the public to forget about these closing of communities. There's got to be a new uh, game plan. I know taxpayers do not want to pay f for people's lifestyles, you know. But it must be a new project or a new idea to say that there's a way that taxpayers do not need to fund our services to these communities, but communities can be self-governed and taken care of itself and communities can make money for themselves and, and Indigenous elders can take full control of communities. So you've got ideas about how communities can be sustainable? In my opinion, it may cost the economy a couple billion dollars to re to build new communities, but if you build these communities, rebuild communities, start from scratch, get rid of all the poverty that's in these communities, clean up all the trash that's happening, like empty cars and all this other stuff is out there, by building new houses, but new houses made out of wood, solar power, where communities can regenerate power and take care of itself, um, and also makes money for the people in these communities. Um, uh, veggie guard where it's traditional veggies from here to grow as a veggie garden and also a windmill for water if, we, if, it's, if the government can give full government uh, control to the elders uh, people can go hunting and live the old way and without interference of the government coming into indigenous lives out in these communities you know.